Hey guys, um, the gospel's always good news. If you obey him and turn, come to him. That's all he's asking right now, guys. We're under a grace dispensation for a season. I don't know how long that season's going to be, guys. And this is the message, and the reason why I title it, I'm just in prayer. I get all this stuff in prayer, guys. It's a birth in prayer. I'm not saying I'm some special superhero or something like that. That's not what I'm saying. Look at my messages. The one about 5 a.m. time. We all need to pray. Guys, we all need to get our direction from Him. Some of the stuff that I say sometimes is years in the making. Literally. He tells me stuff, and sometimes I pray about it. God, are you sure? I pray again. I bring it to him again, again and again. America is fresh out of the hog pen. But the good news is the Father. Read my message about the prodigal son and the robe of righteousness. <clears throat> the whole point of that, and I got that in prayer too. One day my wife was actually out praying in the garage and I was praying inside. She loves to pray. She's got a little special place out there in the garage she made up just for herself and her couch. And just, you know, she loves to watch the sunsets in the early morning. And it's real special to her. Mine just in the house for some reason. But I pray wherever I'm at, honestly. That robe. That son was a pig in a pig pen. Walked a long way. It says so in the Bible. It says he was in a far off land. Long journey. There wasn't a Motel 6, a Hyatt Regency, a Holiday Inn, wherever you stay. You know, the Hilton. There wasn't nothing for him to bathe in, guys. Maybe a river. Maybe. He probably had pig food still stuck in his teeth, guys. Honestly. He was a mess. Would you put a clean, we won't even put a clean gown on a homeless person. You'd tell him to go take a shower first. Clean up, let alone. But that father put the best robe he had on. Reason why we're fresh out of the hog pen, guys. Look around, okay? I'm not politicizing any of this. What do you expect? You know what he was gonna do when you hired him? To lead this country? But look around, guys, okay? This is a very good, I'm gonna say this because there's some good people out there and we're under such intense spiritual attack, physical and spiritual. Okay, I'll tell you that in a second. But this is what I'm saying. Look around. Most of it is related to God's image, which is us enemies out to destroy God's image people okay it starts with abortion that's one I'm gonna name them. I'm just gonna be blunt okay taking a baby's life the image of God you have no right to do that why are they doing it there's various multiple reasons and man you see a lot of the women man they're just they're regretting it years later I've known some of them. It tore them up. There's multiple reasons why they do it. I'm not saying that it's, all, and I'm not blaming the woman. It's not all her fault. That's what the church is doing. Where's the guy? Where's society? Where's the church? Very, very few people are getting help in that area. They're perplexed. But they did it because of the the, the, it started with the sin of sex outside of the marriage. Okay, so it, the devil's taken sex and just twisted it. Okay, pedophiles. If it's even true, half the, even a third, a little even portion of what you hear about what's going on in Hollywood, it's disgusting. No wonder they're all nuts and crazy acting. Pornography, billions of dollars in the business. People look at those, you know, it used to be just, you know, dehuman, it wasn't even, de it's demonizing women, it's demonizing people. Now it's demonizing men, because there's gay magazines too, all over the place. Destroying God's image. You can't 
be with another man or another woman and create a life. Sorry, it ain't happening. Destroying God's image with sex, pedophilism, homosexuality. Man, look at it. They even go to, I'm not trying to be crude, but bestiality, all this crazy stuff, guys. Sex trafficking. Look at what they do to the women. They destroy them while they're destroying families, children, husbands. Why? Where's it coming from? It's demonic. We shouldn't be flying a gay flag and promoting it. What do they say? Pride, proud, proud. But they, you know, pride comes before destruction, guys. I'm telling you, we're fresh out of the hog pen. We've let this go on for too long. And those that are standing up and telling the truth, we're, what are we called? Extremists, crazy, white nationalists, whatever. All kinds of crazy stuff. No. I'm going to preach the truth and the gospel. It's in Leviticus 29 about the temples are polluted. Man, guys, most of these places that call themselves churches are not. Sorry to tell you that. They're just a show, a scam, a way to get people's money. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, because I've got some experience at this, guys. I know what I'm talking about. I've been at churches where you have service every day. I was there for almost eight years. They have service almost every day and they'd have two or three offerings and it was money, money, money. That was just one of the issues, but you know, great pastor and awesome person and man of God, but he was plagued with that, battling that. Then I was at another one for 10 years, guys. And the pastor came to me when we very first started. It was me, my family, three kids, my wife, another family, an older couple, and his family, his kids, a couple of his kids. That was it. It wasn't a, a big congregation. He came to me and said he wanted to buy the church, the land, and the building. And I just bought out. I had really good credit, a good job. He asked me to sign for it. It was like almost a thousand bucks back in the, you know, back in the late eighties, nineties in the middle of the very first night. So, you know, a decent amount. Well, of course, when I signed for it, guess what? My name's on there. It was attached to it. If something happened, I was gonna be financially responsible too. I, I just, I did it out of obedience. And you know what? It was at the very beginning of that 10 year tenure that we were there. That's all I heard from him after that, nothing. I didn't hear every service. We need to pay the t we need to pay the church now. We got this. We got that. He had a business. He paid for it himself. Built it. He, I think when he left, when he he's passed away now. But when he left, there was maybe a hundred people there. It, it didn't grow really big. But he bought the land. He bought the church. He bought the land behind it. He built another part of the sanctuary. He paid for stuff. Never begged for the money, guys. So he could have a salary and a big car and a jet. Nothing wrong with you having a jet. If some billionaire gives you one, great, awesome. Quit begging people for the money. We better turn, guys, and repent. We're like, oh, this is a godly nation. That's all you hear, God, 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 God. How many times do these people say anything about Jesus? Guys, you can't take him out of the equation because that was God's plan. There's no way to get to God without going through Jesus, without going through the blood land, without going through the cross. Many preachers have been saying that. David Wilkerson was one. He said years ago, he said, it's time to not go to the cross, but through the cross. He also said the LGBT movement was militant. It's like a terrorist group. Everybody's racist. Everybody's all this and that. I'm not buying it, guys, at all. Be the proofs in the pudding, okay? I've seen racism on the opposite side do. Okay, when I got saved in 1980, six years in an all black church, guys, in Dallas, poor church in a rich in a rich neighborhood. Look around look around me, there's white um, the only thing white in there was the walls and me. But you know what? I was just glad to be saved. I was like, man, I came out of a 
really, really strong religious goofball religion. Didn't know anything about God or Jesus or the Holy Ghost, any of that. Didn't even know what to do to be saved. Didn't teach it. It It's man-made junk, twisted up to fit their agendas and logic and stuff. I was just glad to be saved and set free, guys. Who am I to tell God where I'm going to be at? Who I'm going to sit under? And he was an awesome, was an awesome pastor. Rough. I needed rough. Because I wasn't a very good, I wasn't even a good citizen person. I wasn't even a good person, honestly, before I got saved. Nobody liked me, including the police. I'll leave it at that. That was 40 years ago, guys, okay? I'm an old guy. I would, on CNN, I fit the poster child of, you know, old guy. Just racism. I'm not racist, guys. I don't care about that stuff. A lot of us that don't. Blacks and whites. Hispanics. That, that's just division, guys. It's the same thing. The enemy's after the image of God. However, he can destroy it. All these news medias and outlets, man. If it's not crazy, goofy stuff, man, that they're 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 Jerry Springer populated or whatever. You know, they just the dirtier the better. The crazier the better. It makes news. Some some stupid person. Oh, they said this. Oh, they said that. Oh, they Facebook is the same way, guys. YouTube is the same way, guys. I put this out there. May get banned for it, I don't know. YouTube had a policy, it been about a year ago, maybe two years ago. Everybody panicked and went frantic and all the people that were making money on it. You couldn't put kids on there. You couldn't say anything about kids. Your content had to be nothing about kids. Well, that was a good policy, honestly. Seriously, it was, it still is. It was to protect the younger generation. But then, I don't know if it's still even out there. They may not even cancel it yet. All this hoopla the last week about this gay choir that was coming after our kids. Well, why did YouTube let it stay on? Or why did he, I don't even know if it's still on. I haven't even checked. Double standard, guys. Why? Because the enemy is out to destroy us. We're fresh out of the pig pen. We better... I'm going to message out, and it's a year old, 5 a.m., a time to weep and pray between the porch and the altar. Guys, everybody's like, man, I grew up here, guys. I will stand for the flag and kneel for the cross. My dad fought valiantly in Korea, told me some the stories. I'm not going to mock any of the sacrifices, even people that weren't in wartime, that they're making for this country. But we're not a godly country anymore, guys. You don't even have to look around. You just have to walk, walk out the door, check Facebook. It's just garbage and trash. Why? Because we've been in the hog pen. We're living in the hog pen. Everybody's like, we want our country back. We're going to stand. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're not going to let the National Guard come to our door and, and vaccinate us, this and that. Guys, we already fell off that wagon. How many of y'all wore a mask and you knew it was wrong? People still do. I went to Walmart about six months ago. Guys, when I'm, I used to, I turned off the news now or off the TV, but one of the channels I used to, I used to like to watch was the History Channel. Man, I like to watch, for some reason, I'd watch a lot of those shows about German Nazis and all that stuff. Or World War II. Man, those prison camps. And I was at the Walmart, it was about a year ago, and nobody would look at me, and everybody had a mask on. I didn't have a mask on. And it was when, everybody, when it was like mandatory, big signs, you know, you couldn't even walk in the store without getting hit by a sign wearing a mask. Oh, I'm not wearing a mask. I'm not going to do it. Sorry. Because I know what's behind it. It's demonic. One guy said, oh, it was just, you know, he put it the best way I've heard it in a while. 
It was first. It was just to flatten the curve. Now it's to take. Now it's you know you got to be vaccinated. You got to. It, it's going to get worse and worse and worse, guys. We fell. I looked around. Nobody would look at me. It was horrible, guys. My heart just sank. We've already lost this country. I'm sorry to tell you that. It breaks my heart too. We're so far gone as a nation, as a people. It's not about a nation anymore. It's about God's people now. Are we going to stand? Are we going to do a little bit more than bark? Are we going to do a little bit more than a bleep, bleep, bleep of 20 seconds or spend the whole day on Facebook and putting out a bunch of different posts and doing a bunch of crazy crap and then just walking away to the computer and doing the same thing? Why do you think it got so twisted, guys? Because we sat on our behind in the comfort of some air-conditioned place and listened to a false gospel. It's not even the gospel. Most of them don't even read the Bible anymore. They don't pray. They don't. They just twist it up, take one scripture or whatever. Some other, you know, a lot of them now, it's they think that they, you know, throw a rock band together and this is a way to get into, to get into the kingdom, to see God, you know. They're gods themselves. Man, I've been there, guys. Know what I'm talking about. Prayed a lot. I have to stand. I'm going to stand before God one day. So are you. And I'm going to have to give account for what just came out of here. It better not have come out of here. Better come out of here in prayer, seeking Him. Do I get it wrong sometimes? Yes. Mostly no. This is not wrong. We're fresh out of the hog pen, guys. It's time to repent, turn from our wicked ways. Listen to God. That 5 a.m. prayer, it's time to weep and pray. Guys, it's urgent. The trumpet's being sounded. I don't know when he's, when he's gonna come back. It might be before this message is over. I'm not, you know, I'm not into all that theological stuff so much. That's just me. That's the vessel he made me. He made, made, made you a little bit different. I heard one guy say, just because of my path is a little bit different doesn't mean I'm lost. But are you praying? Are you seeking him? Or is it just thrown up there? Some goofy prayer. Meaningless. As one pastor you say, he just bounces off the ceiling. Nothing behind it. No meat and potatoes. Nothing's going to stick. Because you don't really mean it. You want something from God. You're not just going before him, seeking direction. You want him to give him advice, direction yourself, what you want, how you think it should be. Get over yourselves, guys. Me too. And get on your knees. Weep and pray. Come to the Father. Come home. He's telling you, come on. I'm going to end with this, okay? Because I told you that a spiritual battle. Okay. My wife asked me the other day, what's wrong, honey? Everything hurts. I told you the stories. My brain, my back, my butt, probably, my feet. Okay, just came out of the hospital. Was in there a week. Really bad infected doze. Didn't start that way. I went to three different doctors and, you know, that just long story, but it's in the bone. But I battled this last year and I made them just get rid of it by keeping IVs on me. Well, they only kept me for a week and then they cut off the IVs and everything was fine and I was going to get them at home and then this doctor changed. I'm in the middle of that battle right now, guys. I'm at home with just oral antibiotics. Well, there was six, eight different doctors and everybody was like, just cut, cut, cut. Got all your toes off, all five of them. Only two are infected. Three are still good. What do you mean, cut them all off? I said, no. Get rid of the infection first. That's a message, guys. It's on, it's on there. Are you connected to the body? 
Are you connected to the blood of lamb? Are you connected to Jesus? Are you really praying? Okay, there's many others. I'm going to name a few, but I don't think they're going to mind. Gabriel Nichols. Man, he's going through some stuff. God, he had kidney cancer. Teresa Gleason. She's going through some stuff. She's got some lung problems. I think she had to do a biopsy today. And she's going through something. Many, many others. Financially, physically, just mentally. He's trying to wear us out with all this stuff. So our mind is wrapped up in stuff. And not about our father's business and the kingdom. I'm going to end with this because it's very important. And I am going to end with this. It was a dream I had almost two years ago. It was a vision, actually. Kind of a both. I mean, it, the Lord just added to it. So it's hard to, hard to tell you exactly. But my wife and I were standing. It was mostly a vision, but I did have some dreams related to it later. My wife and I were standing before mountains, and we each were standing before a mountain, a separate mountain. But we were together, but they were separate mountains. And Jesus was on the other side. I could see him through the mountain. And he was standing on the other side. Come on, come through, come through. And my wife and I both looked at each other. We both had our own mountains to go through. And we started walking to him. And then I looked around, and there was a circular, clear blue lake that the mountain was in the center of on top of this lake. And it was crystal clear blue, very clean. And as my wife and I both stepped onto the water and we walked across the lake on the water heading to the mountain, the lake was cool. It came up through us. And the mountain was on fire. It was raging, guys. A mountain, rock solid, on fire. And Jesus was motioning both of us, come on, come through. Come on, come to me. Come on. He had a road for us both on the other side. But we had to walk through it. And as we got to the mountain, I remember thinking, man, this is going to be hard. It's a rock. It's a, how am I going to come through this mountain? It's on fire, too. I get burned up before I even get to the rock. And as we walked, and as we got where the fire was, before the, before the Rocky Mountain, the coolness kept us from getting burned on this lake. So it's like, okay, I can walk through this. Because the Lord is cooling us, keeping us, calming us. The body of Christ peace that pass all understanding in the midst of storms rocks, mountains, whatever it is and as I started walking through this mountain first I thought man this is hard but then I realized it wasn't because I was going through it it wasn't hard it was almost like butter walking through butter it just it didn't melt away it stayed but I was able to get through and on the other side and walked to Jesus, both me and my wife. And he had a robe of righteousness covered and dipped in the vesture of the blood of the lamb. And it was tailor-made. Mine fit perfectly, my wife's fit perfectly. Didn't get it at the time. Man, guys, I could tell you all the stuff that was on that mountain and that was on fire. This illness is like one of them. My wife's like, man, you know, they're going to cut your toes off. Well, that's kind of 911. It's kind of an emergency. My foot's about to get wiped out, taken off. But I got a bunch of them all throughout my body. It's like, I don't care. God's healed some of them, a lot of them. Some pretty serious stuff, too, guys. That by itself could be a mountain. That wasn't the mountain. There's a bunch of things, guys. Some we had to just shed, get rid of, change, turn, walk to him. That's what he's telling his people now. Come on. The world is like crazy acting. Doesn't matter. They're in a tailspin. The land's on fire, guys. Burning up. The enemy's having a heyday. 
because it's a hog pen. He lives in that stuff, in that chaos, and God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and his word are saying, come, come on, come out. Come out from the hog pen. Come home and let the Father put a robe. Look at my message about the prodigal son and the Father's robe of righteousness, guys. I'll tell you a lot. The urgency is that we have to turn. Not as a nation, but as a people. Sorry to tell you this, but this nation is already gone. Breaks my heart, really sad. And it's not political, it's demonic. It's orchestrated by the devil himself. What did you expect as a nation when we hired somebody that says, okay, to, 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 to just murder and maim everybody. Everybody can have any kind of sex they want with anything and anybody that they want and we'll hang a flag up to celebrate it. You know what's coming, guys? And the reason why I say we're gone is because we did that as a nation. Oh, everybody's barking, we're godly, if you're a nation, oh, we go to church, we do this, we do that. Where's the power and authority of the church? They don't, don't have any, guys. Sorry to tell you. It's not this great godly nation anymore. We're the hog pen. We've got to come out. Love you guys. It is good news because we still have the grace to come out. You're still alive. You're still watching this message. It had nothing to do with me and this message. I'm just a vessel that he's using, guys. Nothing to do with I got saved 40 years ago. Man, I made some serious blunders and mistakes through this journey and travel. And if it wasn't for the grace of God, I would have died and went to hell. Even after preaching for years, probably 20 years total, then I became a prodigal son. I get the grace peace, guys. I really do. I was so mad at God. My wife's like, you weren't mad at God. No, I was shaking my head. fist at God. You're not real. How could you be a real God? How could you be a good God? And all this is happening to me. Well, guess what? The vast majority of it was me, the decisions that I made. Didn't think so at the time, though. Blame God. He wasn't my friend. I didn't know him after I knew him. I really get the grace piece, guys. I walk through it. I'm not saying, I'm not, this is not because this is the message that, that the church has got wrong. It's, it's why they're like they are. They've got this better than mentality. Where do you think all this racism came from? God came to set everybody free. Not just the Jewish people. It has nothing to do with the Jewish people. I'm sorry, it's going to bust a lot of Christian bubbles. It came for the Gentiles, the lost, the undone. He's calling everybody, guys. I don't care what your race is, your nationality is, where you live. In the penthouse or a, a hut in the middle of some podunk place. He's calling. Are you coming to the wedding? That's another message. Are you coming to the wedding? I got a seat saved for you. But look what happened. Most of the people didn't, a lot of people didn't make it to the wedding. Read that, Matthew 22. It's really good news. The wedding's great news. The awesomeness of come, come, come. Look what happened to those that didn't listen and were disobedient and just did whatever they wanted to do. That's why we're in the hog pen. That's why this country sank. It's going under, guys. It's not a godly nation anymore. I'm sorry to tell you that.
If it is, okay. It's a godly nation. Okay. Well, go get your Bible. And go carry it at school, to a school. Pick anyone and start preaching there. And you'll have the sheriff on your behind in about five minutes. Go to the courthouse with the Bible. Go anywhere that's public. Go to CNN. Man, you'll have, you'll get sued. You'll get grounded. You'll get thrown in jail. All kinds of stuff for carrying a Bible and preaching the gospel. Oh, but we're a God-fearing nation. Can we put in God we trust? Look at all the other weird stuff on there. Pyramids and all kinds of crazy stuff. And stuff we don't even know what it says. Guys. It is heaven or hell. We're fresh out of the hog pen, guys. Let's turn from our wicked ways. Repent. Weep between the porch and the altar. Come on. Come with me. Jesus saying, come on, come out from amongst them. Separate yourselves. Don't get your mind polluted with this junk. Oh, I'm just watching the news. Oh, I'm just doing, forget it. It's not news, it's garbage. Dirty, filthy, polluted, diluted, twisted up, you know, pundit, somebody said this, uh, who cares? I'm telling you what God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, His Word said, because I got it in prayer, guys. This is not make-believe. This is not a magical kingdom. It's going to be birthed in prayer. Come out from amongst the world. Come out of the hog pen. Right now, America's the hog pen, guys. I am very sad and sorry to say that. Love you guys. Going to let this go. This message has gotten too long. Love you guys. Come out from amongst them. He's calling his people. I come into the wedding. Love you guys.